Good morning, my name is Mike Capuccio. I'm with NETR, and today we're here um, on a commercial rooftop of a building in North Andover, and we're going to perform commercial HVAC maintenance on two package units today. Um, as you can see in the background, we've got a carrier five-ton rooftop, and over to the right of me that you can't see right now, we've got an older Lennox unit from probably about 2008. What we're going to be doing today is performing HVAC maintenance on the equipment, and we're going to go through our checklist to show you the value and the importance of doing HVAC maintenance on your rooftop units. Okay, so the first step of the maintenance is we're going to log everything into our tablet so we have history and information of the site as we go through this. So some of the information for a good valid maintenance that you'd want to have is obviously the date of the maintenance, the voltage of the unit, the phase of the unit, you know, location of the unit it always is always good, the type of refrigerant that's in the unit, um, any serial numbers and model numbers of the unit are super important that you have that for tracking and ordering parts if we need that at a later date and time. So as you can see, the importance of the maintenance by using the same company all the time is they know what the equipment that you have. They have the model numbers, they have the serial numbers of everything for tracking purposes and or ordering parts and keeping an age on the unit too so we know how old that unit actually is. So we're going to move into the first section of the maintenance which is the blower section. So that's where we start on a cooling maintenance. So we're going to get into checking that now and I'm going to start to show you how we do that. So the first thing we want to make sure before we start any type of maintenance is that the disconnect switch is off. So we know it's in the on position right now. So we're going to flip it down and that shuts all the power off. So we're going to move over to the cooling section and the blower section of the unit right now. And there's a few things that we need to see in here. One of the first checks is the belt. We want to make sure the belt tension is okay. So you can see Mylon's moving that up and down. He's got about a half inch of play. The belt seems to be tight. It seems to be okay. We want to record the belt number. Okay, so on the belt, if you flip that over, you can see that belt is what we call an A40 belt. So that's the size of the belt. And we're going to document that now on our maintenance task here. And we know that this only takes one belt. Sometimes units take two belts, three belts, four belts, etc. This is a one belt system. And We've checked the tension of it, and now we're going to actually inspect the belt, make sure that the belt is okay. So he's rolling it over, and you can see it's nice and smooth. There's no cracks in it. It's not dry rotted. It's a little worn, but it's not really that bad. This machine's fairly new. So we're going to say that that belt is okay at this point in time. We're going to check the shivs, the motor shivs right here, to make sure that they're not all grooved. They seem to be okay at the time. And we're going to inspect the up and down. We're going to check the bearings on the actual blower wheel by moving that up and down. There's no play in that blower wheel. And we're going to give a quick inspection on the wiring. The wiring all looks good right there. So um, all the supports look good on the motor. The fan itself looks good. We can see there's no broken blades on the fan. And all of this looks pretty good in here. This is a fairly new unit. So we look at the wiring, everything does look good. The blower wheel looks good, the pulleys look good, the belt looks good. So this kind of gets us through the blower section of what we're seeing here. There's no cracks in anything, so we're gonna move on to the, the additional cooling sections of the unit right now. Okay, so now we've moved over to the filter section of the unit, and the filter section is in here on this particular unit, and the economizer section is here too. And we also have some filters under here. There's some filter screens. So we're going to replace these filters that are in here. That's part of a regular maintenance. And we're going to check the economizer screen, and we're going to check the economizer filter. So let's open this up here. Let's see what we have inside here. So that just kind of slides up, opens up. And you can see the filters are inside the unit right here. And they're, they're not terribly bad, but they're a little bit dirty. So we're going to take those out and we're going to replace these filters that are in here. Okay. So you can see this, this unit takes four filters. You can see they do get pollen and dirt and everything in here. And you know, with the viruses and everything now, we want to make sure that we're keeping our filters clean as well. We're also going to inspect this evaporator coil because this is where the refrigerant's flowing through for the air conditioning side. So we're, we're inspecting this coil, and this coil does look pretty clean right now. Um, there are some little bits of pieces and paper in here we'll take out of here. And we could we could brush clean that coil if need be, but it looks it looks pretty clean at this time. I don't really think anything needs to be done with that. This is a fairly new unit. And we're going to inspect the wiring to everything. Everything does look pretty good. There's no 
no breaks in anything, nothing corroded. Everything's everything's in here. It's it's in all the holders. We're just gonna put a couple of these wires back in place here into the to the holders there. And now we're gonna ins we'll install the new filters. And as we install those new filters, we're gonna date these filters the day that we're changing them. So now we're gonna inspect the economizer filters. Those are underneath here. Okay, and they're a metal screen filter, an economizer. Um, the economizer actually is, is where you can bring fresh air into the, to the unit. So this is where there's a set of dampers behind here that opens and closes depending on the outside temperature if you don't want the actual air conditioning to run when it's cool out. Like today, it's about 50 degrees outside here and we're doing this. So if the air conditioning was actually to come on today, the compressors would not come on. It would probably open up fully and the cold air from the outside would be forced into the building. Versus in the summertime, we'd want the economizer closed because it would be 90 degrees out. We don't want to be pulling 90 degree air in all the time. So just maybe stay open just a little bit to bring some fresh air into the building. And you can see with these mechanical gears here, this is what actually drives the economizer open and close. So this air needs to be filtered as well. So it goes through a set of screens that I'm going to have Marlon take out and we're going to inspect these screens and see how clean they are because this is where you know fresh air is coming right in and it's going right in there. It's, it's, if you didn't have those filters on the here and there, these filters would get completely dirty in a couple of days. So this kind of takes the heavy duty pollen and dirt out of there. So he's removed three or four screws and he's going to slide these screens out and we're going to do a visual on these screens. And you can see they're dirty. So we're going to clean these. We're going to we're going to clean off these screens here now. This is part of the maintenance. Sometimes these we find that these are completely gone because this is like an aluminum and after a while these do need to be replaced too. But these probably last what a couple of years maybe? Two or three years. Two or three years. So we're going to clean these off now and that's going to be done with just some basic water and some soap. So we're going to take them over and we're going to clean these. Okay so now we've moved over to the to the back side of the cooling side of the unit. And this is where a lot of problems come in a lot of the times is with the drains. So as you can see right here, this is where the condensate comes out of the unit. And these get blocked up a lot of the times. And when that gets blocked up and plugged and water can't come out the end of it, the water ends up sitting in the pan inside the unit. And then that water usually ends up going down inside the building and getting ceiling tiles wet and everything else. It can cause a lot of damage for just five minutes worth of work. So I'm going to have Marlon unscrew this. We're going to unscrew this and I'm going to show you how, how we check and clean the drain trap. Okay. So as he's taking that off, you can see some water is coming out of that. Okay. And I can see some sludge inside of there. This is where algae and dirt and everything and the sludge lives inside of this drain trap. So um, you know, you usually try and you bang it out. And then we have a hose up here, so we're gonna just flush some water through the actual trap to make sure that the trap is clean. And you can see a whole bunch of crap just came out of that. And now it's running nice and clean and clear and free. And if you look on the roof, you can actually see all the sludge that did come out of the drain. So that drain was getting ready to be clogged up. And you can see this unit is really not that old probably has one cooling season on it and the drain is already clogged up so you can see what happens when you don't have drain maintenance very important drain maintenance just one one quick part of that I mean just that five minutes of what we just did can cause you five thousand dollars worth of damage and that is something that does need to be maintained on a regular basis so we're gonna put the drain back in we call that condensate management Okay, so we're into the cooling section, electrical section actually. You can see the cooling section is down low and the electrical section is up high up here. So inside of this electrical connection, I just want to make sure first power is turned off that before I start touching any wires or anything, but we've got a bunch of different printed circuit boards in here. We've got a couple of things we call contactors in here. We've got a transformer in here, a capacitor in here, a thermostat logic board, and an economizer module. So each one of these particular components has its own function that needs to be checked when doing a maintenance. Okay, so now we're on the opposite side of the unit. This is the condenser section of the unit, what we call. So you have a condenser coil here on 
the top of the unit we have a condenser fan motor here which keeps the condenser cool. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're going to look at with that. And I'm just going to point out a couple of the components in here. Is we have our compressor in here which is the heart of the system that we're going to check. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the crankcase heater that's on the bottom of there. And there's some safeties on here that we're going to walk through when we check this. So the first thing is we're going to check the condenser fan motor. And basically the way we check this condenser fan motor is on the opposite side of the unit there's two wires that we can put our amp clamp around and check the amperage. Make sure that the amperage is maintaining what the amperage draw says on the actual motor. So you can see on the motor, it actually shows you the full load amp. So you should check that, make sure that the amperage is good. Check the mounting, make sure that the mounting is fine. We can see right now that you know the motor is nice and tight, it's not wiggling. And this particular motor has three blades on it. I'm inspecting the blades. I'm looking at the rivets on the top of them, seeing if there's any cracks in there, or if any of the blades are broken or warped. All three fan blades do look okay. Nothing looks cracked, nothing looks rusted. Um, and then you just kind of give it a quick spin with your hand. Make sure everything looks balanced, which it does. I don't see any warpage or anything like that, so that looks okay. Now, we're going to inspect the condenser coil. This is where a lot of the problems come in every summer. Every summer you come out and your condenser coil is not clean. Okay, what do I mean by clean? Um, you have to envision a day when you have pollen out here and dirt and everything flying through the air because this air is being drawn in through here and extracted out of the top. So anything that's blowing around in the air is going to get sucked into this coil. This coil needs to be cleaned once a year. Okay, we have a chemical chemical cleaning solution that we're going to wash this down with. We're not going to do this at this point in time, but this coil does need to be cleaned. If, if I took you around the other side and looked at it, you can see there's already pollen in it, and this unit's fairly new, okay? So we have to make sure our condenser coils are kept clean, all right? Sometimes a condenser coil is a two-circuit condenser where you actually have to split the condenser and wash between them. But this coil here, we're gonna wash it and clean it in a little bit. Now we're gonna get over, go over to the compressor section of this, and you can see there's two pressure switches on here. One's a high one is a high-pressure line, one's a low-pressure line. And you can see there's two safety devices on there. They both look like they're on there nice and tight. The wiring looks okay. Nothing looks corroded or broken. I'm inspecting the wiring up and over the copper. It all looks okay. I'm just taking a quick visual on the copper section of the unit, making sure nothing's rubbing or touching. Um, usually if you have a refrigerant leak with a unit and you're inspecting it, you usually see a little bit of oil and some dust around it. You'd have a, you'd have a wet spot. Um, where it would be dusty and there'd be, there'd be dirt on I can see dust here, but I don't really see, I can see a little bit of oil around these caps where some things are, but that's just, you know, basically when you're putting your gauges on and off. But if you had a small leak somewhere, you'd see dust and oil accumulating. I don't see any of that anywhere inside here in the condenser section, so I've taken a good look at that, make sure nothing's there. I'm gonna visually inspect, there's a filter dryer in the back here, which is blue. Um, it looks like it's okay. It's, it's nice and tight and nothing's rusted and rotted on it. It looks all right. We're going to inspect that as we walk through the actual cooling when we put our gauges on this. And then there's a crankcase heater that keeps the compressor warm. You can usually just touch that. You can, you can touch it. You can feel if it's working. It's going to be hot. You're going to be very careful. Just kind of touch it with your finger. If it feels warm, it's working. The crankcase heater is either good or bad. Check it for corrosion as well too around the back make sure that that's okay. And you can see there's four compressor mounting bolts that hold the compressor in place. They're all in there. Compressor's nice and tight. Sometimes these mounts all break apart and they get loose and the compressor starts wobbling. That's when lines start breaking. So everything looks okay on this visually. Everything looks really good. We're going to clean the condenser coil in a few. But now what we're going to do is we're going to do a pressure check on the unit. So we have a suction and discharge line and we're going to put a set of gauges on this and we're going to check our pressures with this to make sure that our pressures are okay. That's part of the cooling maintenance that we do to make sure that the unit is full of refrigerant. So we're going to put some gauges up on that, then we're going to test it. This is the compressor section of the air conditioner. You have your suction or low side port and you have your discharge port or high side. And you put your, on your gauges, you have your low side gauge here, a part of the gauge, and you have your high side part of the gauge. So 
what we're trying to do here is check the refrigerant. What's going on in the machine with the compressor? How, how is the refrigerant circulating through the machine? Are we getting good uh, good pressures? Are they, uh, you know, do we have restrictions? And we can tell that by looking at the gauges here. This machine is a, uh, every, every air conditioner, well not every air conditioner, but air conditioners have different refrigerants in them. Uh, this machine has four, uh, 410A, which I can change that. Actually, I had to change that because this was on a, another machine that had 404A for one time. So I'm going to go, and it's 410A. That's the type of refrigerator that's in the machine. So we have to do that because that'll tell us what the superheat is. Because the, the gauges calculate superheat for me because I have my temperature probe here. So what I do is I set my gauges up, put my low side gauge on here on the suction port, my high side gauge here on the discharge port, I put my temperature probe on my low side on and attach it to the suction pipe, and I put my liquid temperature, liquid refrigerant on the high side to the liquid line which is down inside of there next to the built dryer. And when we do that, we can see right here I have 114 pounds of pressure on my suction side. And it's telling me that I have a 3.4 degree superheat, which is low, but we are operating with cooling temp, very it's cold out here in the ambient temperature. It's 50 degrees or so. So it's going to be low because it's not a load on it. This here is the high side. It's telling me it's 264, 264 pounds of discharge pressure. That's low for 410A, but obviously it's low because we have a, a cool ambient temperature. And my subcooling is 19.5 degrees, which is better than normal. That means we have a solid column of liquid in that line, which we want. So that tells me that the machine is charged properly. It is. It does have super uh, sub uh, superheat because we want superheat. Because if we don't have superheat, we're going to flood back to the compressor with liquid refrigerant, and we can't compress the liquid. What's going to happen is. The compress is going to disintegrate, or it's going to break up. So that just tells you a rough idea of what's going on in the machine by putting it here. So, so again, from a maintenance standpoint, from, from a building owner that has a bunch of equipment on his roof, this is very important that this gets done at least once a year in the, in the springtime, because if it's not, I came up here, Marlon, and let's say these were both reading zero, zero pressure, zero pressure. What's that indicating to you? What would that be telling you? That, that would tell me that there's no refrigerant in the system. There's no refrigerant inside of this machine. So we have a massive leak. There would be a cracked pipe or fitting that's loose so that it would be empty. So the, I guess the importance of this is with maintenance, if it was just a little bit low on refrigerant and some of these pressures weren't matching up, during the maintenance we could add a little bit of refrigerant to it and do a small leak test and make sure that you know, it could be a, a Schrader fitting leaking or a little little small leak somewhere that could be a minor repair versus a major repair at that time by doing this once again. Okay, so now we're going to chemically clean the condenser coils. As I said previously, that these coils need to be washed and cleaned. So we're going to put some, some condenser coil cleaner on these and we're going to we're going to wash these all down so that all the pollen and dirt and everything is out of these coils. We're also going to wash the um, economizer screens as well while we're doing this. So I'm going to go grab those, bring those over here, and we're going to wash all of those down. So you can see there's a white foamy substance going on there now, and you can see it foaming up as he's spraying that on, and that's actually pulling all of the dirt out of the coil right now. So uh, you can see he has protective gloves on safety glasses on. I probably shouldn't be standing right here without any glasses, but you can see that's all white and that's all being pulled right out of there now. So this is part of a maintenance as well. And you can see now, you can actually see that this 
this material is starting to turn, instead of white, it's actually foaming all up and starting to turn black. That's actually extracting the dirt from inside of that coil. These are the economizer screens that we took out earlier that came out of the economizer section where the fresh air goes in. So we're going to clean these down now too. And you can see just getting in the middle of them, you can see how clean they're getting just doing that. So we're going to close these off too as well. Get these back to new, get these clean. And then we'll put those back in. These can't be cleaned, these are replaceable too, so we can get we can order these and get these made up and these can be replaced too because these only have so long of a life. These last roughly around probably three to five years, somewhere in that range. So we've wrapped up the cooling part of the maintenance now and you know we would finish off our tasking sheets on our tablet as I showed you earlier in the video. And now we're gonna move over to the heating side. Cause like I said, we, we finished the condenser, we cleaned the condenser, we cleaned the economizer filters, we've checked our blower, we've checked our belts, we've checked our evaporator coil for cleanliness, we've checked our drain, we've checked our compressor pressures, um, we've checked our condenser fan motor and blades, and we've gone through the electrical section and we've checked our economizer. Now, when we get into the heating season, there's a whole nother part that needs to get checked. So, this is what we're really doing is a spring and fall maintenance now. So now we're into the fall, but everything that applied to the spring, a lot of that would still be done in the fall too as well. So um, we're gonna move into the heating section of it and we're gonna check the heating components and what needs to be checked on a heating maintenance. So inside of here is our heat exchanger. We're gonna remove this panel. We're gonna inspect our heat exchanger and then we're gonna move over to the other side of the unit. We're gonna check our burners, our gas valve, our ignition systems, our vent motors, and things like that. So we've removed the panel for the heat exchanger, and you can see down inside here there's a hole, and that's that's actually where the air is basically being forced down into the building. That's a supply air vent, so that's where the air would be going down. These tubes right here, this is what we call our heat exchanger tubes, and that's where the actual flame from the burner is going inside of the tube. So these tubes are getting very, very hot. That gets extremely hot, and that's what, where the heating is actually coming. The air is going over that hot heat exchanger, but there's some things we need to check on this heat exchanger because this, these, these tubes right here tend to crack, okay, with long, you know, over periods of heating and stuff. These tubes can get rusted, can get cracked, so you're visually going to inspect this heat exchanger for cracks. So this unit's fairly new, so I'm gonna get down in here and take a look. Um, it looks pretty good. I don't see any cracks in it anywhere. It's only a year or two old, so it's, it looks actually pretty good. Um, there's no, usually if you see a crack, it tends to be on, on the bends right here, on the elbows is usually where you would see them. Anywhere else, Marlon, where you'd see any of those cracks? Or? Usually on the elbows or the seam right here where this when in the factory when they put them together there's a seam and it it tends to fail right there you'll see little holes it's a very 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 important thing to be checked on the heating season because if there are cracks in there what can happen carbon monoxide inside the building inside the building because the flame from your burners the gases from the flame the carbon monoxide is inside of these tubes is being drawn to the outside after it's part of combustion. If there's a leak, the air that's passing over these tubes can take that carbon monoxide and drive it down into the space where people are working or just eating or whatever. So that's a very important thing that needs to be checked during the heating season. So that's your heat exchanger, they call that. And that's for a gas system. So we're gonna move over 
to the ignition side, we're gonna check ignition, draft induced motor, and the uh, gas valve. I'm gonna show you how we check that on the maintenance. Okay, so we're into the heating section of the unit now and what we would check on a maintenance during the heating. So this is the actual gas pipe that comes up from inside the building. So we're gonna do a visual on the gas pipe. First thing you wanna make sure is the gas is turned on. The gas is turned on on this unit. I can see the line going straight forward. Pipe looks a little rusted, but I don't, you know, smell. I don't really smell any gas or anything like that. The gas is on, so that looks okay. We're going to visually inspect the gas valve. We're going to check the connections on it. That seems okay. I don't see any leaks or anything like that in the gas in the gas valve. I don't smell anything. Behind here is the draft induce motor. I'm going to make sure that the draft induce motor does turn. Um, we're going to check this. Vis we're going to check this from an electrical standpoint when we turn it on, but it looks tight. There's nothing loose on it. And behind it is our burner logs that you really can't see that closely, but we'll get a close up of that in a few minutes. But nothing looks rusted or rotted in there where the actual flames are gonna go on. Again, we talked about the ignition board earlier. I'm gonna check the connection on the sparker. That's where the spark comes, which actually ignites the burners and lets the burners come on with the gas. So that all seems okay. Connections on the board seem okay. I don't see any rust or corrosion on the board, so all that looks okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire off the heat. We're gonna make sure that the heat comes on when the thermostat says, yes, I need heating in the building, please come on and cool, cool the space. So we're gonna, we're gonna put that on and make sure that that's working okay. We're gonna check our draft induced mode and make sure it's turning in the right direction. Um, and we're also gonna make sure that our, our blower fan comes on in the heating mode not so much just the cooling mode too, because we already checked it in the cooling mode, but we're gonna make sure that that comes on in the heating mode too. So we're gonna start it up and give it a whirl and we're gonna check those components. Okay, so we've got the thermostat calling down inside, so we're gonna, we're gonna turn the machine on and we're gonna check the heating side of it. So I've just heard that my draft induced motor came on and I heard my burners fire off. So I can look now down in there I can see that my burn is not burning. I can also feel that this is hot. This is now warm. This is the exhaust right here. This is pretty much your, your electric chimney. And I can feel that getting warm. So I know my burners are ignited. I don't see any orange flames. Everything looks nice and blue down in there. It seems to be running real good. The fan motor's on. The gas valve opened up. The blow motor is on inside the, inside the compartment. We can hear that running. So we know that our fan's turning. So we know that our heat is working right now. We know the ignition is igniting the system. And heating is really just a, a lot of visual checks to make sure that everything is coming on. We just heard that the, the motor did just kick on. I'm sorry, the motor wasn't on earlier. So now what we can do is we can check our amperage to the nameplate on the motor to make sure that that is working okay. So this was the contactor earlier that we told you would come on when the fan would come on, that blower fan. So we want to check our amperage on that and make sure that that's okay. So these are the motor leads that go to the motor. And we can now see that that motor is drawing 5.5 amps. So we're going to check the nameplate on the motor to ensure that that is drawing 5.5 amps. Nameplate is 8.4. 8.4, so it's okay. drawing below the 8.4, and that's good. So if it was drawing more than 8.4, we would know we have a problem with that motor. So we know that we're okay with how that's drawing. So that's really all that's done on a heating check. It's, it's, there's a lot of visual. Make sure the flames come on. Make sure your draft induced motor works. Check your heat exchanger. Check your blow motor. And that pretty much wraps up everything that we've checked on this unit. So we've gone through heating, cooling, economizer, how everything works. So it's, it's, it's a, a lot of visual that's going on, but you can see there's also a lot of mechanical checks that are being done with some cleaning and stuff like that. So final wrap-up would be is to log everything in that we've done onto the tablet to the tasking form that we were working with at the beginning of the video when we talked about it. So now we have a visual consensus of what actually happened on the day of the maintenance. So we have everything logged in here. We have amperages logged. We have that the coils were clean. We have that everything was checked, that the drains were checked and everything. So this gives you, the building owner, a good log of history of what was done on your equipment. So I hope this video was helpful and you can understand now the importance of doing maintenance on your rooftop equipment.